fishing is one of our most popular outdoor sports. Each year, more than 50 million Americans spend time on the water attempting to catch fish. We can divide sport fishing into three basic types. Casting, trolling, and still fishing. Still fishing requires the maximum amount of patience because you must wait for the fish to come to you. For trolling, you'll need a boat, because with this method of fishing, you take the bait or lure to the fish. Casting is the most active form of fishing. You place the lure where you think the fish will take it. In most types of casting, the rod sends a lure on its way, and the weight of the lure pulls the line from the reel. In fly fishing, you actually cast the line. It's the weight of the fly line that pulls the almost weightless lure, the fly, through the air to the target. Hello, I'm John Fabian. I've been fishing for over 50 years. During that time, I've tried just about every method there is to catch fish. I've enjoyed them all, but I've settled on one that I prefer over the others. In this tape, I'd like to show you why fly fishing is becoming so popular and why it's my favorite brand of this great sport. Come on with me. Let's take a look at what fly fishing is all about. First, I'll show you why fly fishing is special to me and why I think it's so much fun. Then, you'll find that fly rods will take fish virtually everywhere, no matter where you live or what kind of fish you enjoy catching. We'll start with panfish. They're scrappy little fish, eager to bite, and a whole lot of fun to catch on a fly rod. Of course, trout are the fish most commonly associated with fly fishing. We'll explore the trout's world to see why he's such a perfect fly rod target. Next, you'll see that bass are powerful game fish that love to attack flies on the surface. Then, I'll show you some of the most spectacular steelhead fishing in the world as we pursue these magnificent fish with fly rods. Salt water offers the ultimate challenge and excitement for the fly fishermen. You'll see what it's like to land a fish on a fly rod that may weigh more than you do. And finally, just when you think you've seen it all, you'll find that a fly rod can be your ticket to fantastic fishing just about anywhere in the world. I enjoy fishing in almost any form, but there's something about fly fishing which gives me a special sense of satisfaction. The casting alone can be a pleasurable experience. It's like getting a solid hit on a golf ball or the feel of a smooth, accurate swing in tennis. No other type of fishing offers such an exquisite blend of both art and science. The science of selecting a fly which will deceive the fish and the art of placing that fly precisely with a well-aimed cast. The fight is a direct personal contest between man and fish. There are no weights or heavy gear to steal life from the battle, and the fish is free to leap and fight, with only the skill of the angler to contain him. The fly line itself is strong, but the leader must be delicate and fragile enough so that the fish will take the fly. One of the nice things about fly fishing is that a small fly hooked in a lip doesn't harm the fish, and anglers who wish may release them with ease. On another day, another fisherman may enjoy catching this fish, or perhaps I'll catch him again myself, and he'll be even stronger and wiser. Yes, fly fishing is special to me, and thousands of other anglers too, because it's truly a sport that anyone can enjoy, no matter where you live or how old you are. Each year, more young people are taking up fly fishing as they discover that although it's not easy, it's quickly learned, does not require great strength, and once learned, it pays dividends which no other type of fishing can offer. 
The basic system is simply a fly rod, a reel, a fly line, and of course flies. The flies are connected to the line by a leader, and the leader tippet is the weakest point in the system. Flies are classified according to their construction and the way they're handled in the water. Dry flies are designed to resemble aquatic insects that float on the surface. Wet flies and nymphs imitate immature aquatic insects and small marine organisms that are found beneath the surface. Terrestrials are land-bred insects that fall into the water by accident, and the fish love them. Terrestrials include flies like ants, grasshoppers, beetles, and caterpillars. Streamers and bucktails are long skinny flies designed to look like minnows or small fish that larger fish might feed on. Large streamers like this are often used in saltwater fly fishing. Surface poppers are constructed of materials which cause them to float. They may resemble a frog or a mouse, or perhaps they just suggest something that a fish might eat. Fly fishing equipment comes in different sizes. The size of the system you use is determined much the way a golfer selects a club for each special shot. The type of fly you choose, the distance you need to cast, and the size and strength of the fish you plan to catch determine the weight of the system you'll need. For instance, panfish in ponds will be handled nicely with a light four or five weight fly fishing system. Panfish is the angler's name for a wide variety of warm water species, including bluegill, perch, sunfish, crappie, and white bass. These tough little game fish thrive equally well in urban lakes or in country farm ponds. Almost any body of warm water, regardless of size, will have panfish as long as it doesn't dry up in the summer or freeze solid in the winter. For many anglers, a panfish is their first encounter with any type of fishing. This is also a good place to start with a fly rod. Selecting flies for panfish is quite easy. They're usually eager to take anything that vaguely resembles their food. Now bluegills feed on everything from insects to night crawlers, from crawdads to small minnows. You can be pretty safe in offering them almost anything in your fly box. But the countrywide favorite with angler and bluegill alike is a small popping bug. Bluegills really go for surface poppers. White bass and crappies show a definite preference for minnows under two inches in length. So small streamers are the most productive flies for these fish. Okay. And just sort of push your barb down. Just like I'm doing. See how I'm doing? The rod's down on the ground. For over 15 years, Bob Gard has been starting anglers on the road to successful fly fishing. And panfish are part of his program. So why are we going to let them go? The next time we come, there's going to be some fish in here, right? Just like a handshake. Thumb up on top. Thumb, there you go. Just like Harley. There you go. And hook the line under one finger. Just one finger, not the whole hand. Just set the fly down. Set the fly down. Okay, now we're just I think you learn fly casting quicker if you have an incentive. Strip a little line out like that. Panfish are great for learning because you can find them almost anywhere. They're easy to catch, and I don't care how old you are, panfish are fun. Hey, Daddy, I caught something! Think it's a bluegill? Look, Dad! I see that. That's not bad. It's a bluegill. I got this thing stuck in his face. Put him back let in. Him go? You bet. You bet. Nice fish. <laughs> All right. That's a nice little bluegill. Whoa. Whoa. Most of us have to practice to become good casters. But if you can catch a fish now and then while you're practicing, you're actually learning two important fly fishing skills casting and playing fish on fly tackle. I just love to see the expression on a student's face when they hook their first fish on a fly rod. Straight over your head. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, this kid's an animal here. All right, boy, that, you see that guy hit? That's looking good. What do you think? Boy, this is a, this is a little nicer than the other guy. You gonna, you, Simon's going to wind him right up through the guides. Well, That's a big one. Can you get him out of there? Give yourself a little bit of slack. You can sort of set him down by the water. 
There you go. Whoa! That's the beauty of these barbless hooks, I think. But... Ah, all right. Hold them in the water a little bit. That's a nice one. Hold him up and straight up. Yes. Kind of, there you go. Whoa, oh, he's all right. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> what do you think? That's your first fly rod fish, huh? It doesn't have to be a big fish, it but it's important to catch something. Not bad, huh? What's he say? Well, he's pretty good size, you know. Did you see that, Malia? Panfish are found almost everywhere, so it's an easy way to start fly fishing. But sooner or later, you want to fly fish for trout. The trout is a marvelous creature. It's as if he were designed especially for the fly fisher. His habitat is wild, clean waters. His diet of aquatic organisms intrigues and challenges the mind, and yet these organisms are most easily imitated with artificial flies. A trout is a beautiful fish. Dark spots cover his shiny flanks, which contain the power to both thrill and intimidate the angler. The reason why I wanted to learn fly fishing was not the idea that I would go and catch a lot of fish. It was the idea that it was a very serene type of fishing. I've done other types of fishing. Fly fishing to me, when I've watched people, there seemed to be um, some sort of communion that they had with the whole experience. And I wanted to learn the art and the technique. And I knew once I learned that, then I'd be able to catch fish. And when I realized I had a fish, uh, I went berserk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that initial feeling was one of really a lot of exhilaration. I mean, it wasn't huge, but it was it was the thought that I was able to tease that fish enough to take that bait, that I was able to match the fly with a fish, and 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 that fish bought it. You know, thought it was actually its food. So that was really exciting. Come here. The first time I went fly fishing, I was trying to catch trout. Oh God, is he pretty? And so when I heard that he put the barb down and it's catch and release, that aesthetically is pleasing to me. You're not taking anything away from the environment. You're just having some fun and not doing anybody any damage. Go on. Yeehaw. <laughs> oh, geez. They sure fight. A fly fisherman must learn of a trout's continual search for food. When they're very young, Trout discover that most of their meals are found beneath the surface, near the bottom of the stream. They feed most heavily on the nymphs and larvae of aquatic insects. A trout may take whatever looks like food into his mouth, but it quickly rejects what it doesn't like. During the spring and summer months, aquatic insects emerge or hatch as mature winged insects. At times, there's more food on or above the surface than there is below, so when a hatch occurs, the trout rise to feed on the bugs that float momentarily on the surface. When trout feed hungrily on the top of the water, it's a time of high excitement for the dry fly fishermen, a time which brings hurried casts and missed strikes from even the most experienced anglers. Everyone who's serious about fly fishing for trout should know the basic items of a trout's diet. This little fellow is a mayfly. He has upright wings and a forked tail. There are many species of mayflies and they compose a major insect food for trout. Equally prominent on a trout's menu are caddisflies. Their wings fold like a tent over their backs. The wings of a stonefly lay flat over his back and on some western streams like the Madison, unusually large stoneflies emerge. Locally, these are called salmon flies. After hatching from the egg, the nymph spends a year or two underwater. When he reaches maturity, the nymph becomes active and crawls to the shore where he leaves the water and attaches himself to a convenient rock or bush. Exposed to the air and the sun, the nymph dries. As it dries, the skin splits between the shoulders and the adult stonefly emerges. When large bugs like these are hatching, it brings big trout to the surface in a frenzy of feeding that's unmatched any other time of the year. Mating takes place on the bushes and soon after, the female flies out over the water to deposit her eggs and die. Now the cycle is complete and the trout have had an opportunity to feed on both the nymph and the adult fly. When you see a fisherman crawling through brush or looking under rocks, he's not completely crazy. He's probably looking for insects so that he can do a better job of matching the hatch.
An expert fly caster, Jim Green would rather fish a dry fly for trout than anything else, especially on a stream like Silver Creek in Idaho. In dry fly fishing, you see the fish when it takes the fly. With an almost automatic reflex, you set the hook. There's heavy weed growth in this stream, so it's expedient to strip the slack line in by hand, rather than playing the fish on the reel. Stripping the line in is faster than reeling, and it also gives you more fingertip control to help keep the fish free of the vegetation. In most dry fly fishing, a very fine leader and a small fly are necessary to get strikes. So once a fish is on, he must be played skillfully and carefully. The slightest mistake could break the delicate leader or cause the tiny hook to pull loose. Here's the essence of fly fishing a brightly colored rainbow trout 17 inches long. He was taken on a fly which exactly imitates the natural food of the fish. After you remove the fly, it's best to swim the fish upright in the water until it's able to move away under its own power. Well, I don't know what might stir a fisherman's blood more than a sunset during an evening hatch on a big western stream. Unless it might be sunrise on a mountain lake where the trout are on the prowl. It's difficult to compare fishing on lakes and streams. Each has its own rewards. When a good hatch occurs on a lake, the trout swim just under the surface, picking off the tiny insects at random and leaving a pearl-like string of rise rings as they move among the insects. As on streams, there's always a variety of insects which may emerge. And here at Hebgen Lake in Montana, the fish are feeding on small mayflies. Lake fishing requires skill and sometimes patience. On a stream, the fly floats past a trout and he must decide quickly whether to take it or not. But on a lake, the trick is to intercept a feeding fish and hope that it takes your fly from among the many naturals. It's always suspenseful and the pulse quickens as a trout moves closer to your fly. This time, Jim plays the fish off the reel. The fish is usually more easily played on a lake because there are fewer obstacles and no current to aid him in the fight. The rod should be held in an upright position so the soft tip can cushion a sudden surge without breaking the leader. It's a satisfying feeling to land a rainbow like this. However, the real excitement was when he first took the fly. The satisfaction derived from fooling a distrustful trout is one of the things that make fly fishing. If you haven't already, I hope you'll try fly fishing for trout. I'll warn you now that once you start, it's a never-ending process of learning, and that's just one of the aspects that make it challenging. You see, fly fishing isn't just a sport. It's an art, a science, and a philosophy. Frequently, it's the best way to catch fish. When the bugs hatch and the trout rise, I'll be there. I hope you'll be there, too. All too often, fly fishing is associated only with trout, but this is misleading because although trout fishermen do make up the majority of fly fishers, their numbers are not growing nearly as fast as the fly rotters who are going after bass. Consider this. Bass are the most popular and abundant game fish in America. Fly fishing is the most rewarding and enjoyable way to catch any fish. This combination makes for great sport at practically everyone's doorstep. Here's the chance to experience the violent strike of an angered fish. 
feel the power of a heavy largemouth fighting to get back to his den. Or maybe it's simply the opportunity to relax from the matching the hatch intensity of trout fishing. At any rate, fly rotting for bass is great fun. The largemouth bass is a moody, aggressive creature, a first-class predator. He's an opportunistic feeder, and when he's hungry, whatever's unlucky enough to wander by is devoured. His environment presents him with a much more varied menu of food organisms than the typical trout stream. Bass feed largely on aquatic species like tadpoles, leeches, crawdads, and smaller fish, including other bass. But the typical bass pond also offers a variety of other things to eat on a less regular basis. In the spring, baby muskrats may be around, or the occasional field mouse may land in the water. Frogs are a favorite meal, and grasshoppers, dragonflies, and other large insects often become bass food. Blackbirds and ducklings have also been known to become victims of a hungry bass. The largemouth has evolved physically and psychologically to take advantage of these feeding opportunities. His belligerent, aggressive nature sends him charging to the sight or sound of almost any creature in distress, and his mouth is large enough to swallow anything that doesn't swallow him first. Oh, look at this water this morning. Isn't this beautiful? There's got to be bass in here. Come on, bass. You won't need heavy fly tackle for bass because the average bass caught by any method is seldom over two pounds. But you will need at least a medium seven weight fly fishing system because the flies are large and wind resistant and you'll have to power the fish away from the weeds. Larry Green's been fishing for bass for more than 40 years. His favorite method is to use a fly rod and catch them on large popping bugs. Now there's every type and style of bass bug from deer hair poppers and sliders and all kinds of bass bugs. The great thing about this fishing is you just never know where they are or when they're gonna come up. It just keeps you on your toes every minute. Sometimes when you least expect it, that's when they just explode on it. Oh, there he is. Oh, look, at, did you see him just bust out of nowhere and take that bug? He's not a big bass, but oh, did he charge that. It doesn't matter what size they are from one pound to 10 pounds, they all take it with that same great enthusiasm. Isn't that a pretty northern largemouth black bass? Let's go get another one now. So I like to put a bug out there, and after it sets for just a moment, I like to pop it one good pop. Let it set for a few seconds, pop it again. Bass don't always eat just out of hunger. You gotta tease them onto a strike, and I wanna tell you, when you do that, and a bass comes for it, it is dynamite. The whole thing about catching bass on a surface bug is that it's totally unpredictable. It catches you by surprise. You don't know if it's a quarter pound bass, a five pound bass, a three pound bass, and you do not know when he's gonna hit. And when he does, it's an explosive take generally. And it comes out of nowhere and just catches you off guard. And sometimes you jerk the bug clear out of his mouth. Sometimes you wait too long. Sometimes you're just stunned. And that's a great thrill of this catching bass on the surface. You never know when it's gonna happen. that just the anticipation of never knowing when they're gonna come for it, come right through the surface on it, just raises the hackles on the back of my neck. You gotta be right on them, because they can grab a bug and spit it before you, if you waste a, a second, he's gone. So you gotta sock them hard and fast, drive that hook home, and then you've got to strip that line in quick because you've got to keep a tight line on him and keep his head up out of that moss. A largemouth loves to dive right down in those weeds and tangle you up every time. And that's why I always use at least 10 pound leader. Don't go lighter 
because given one second of a chance, that bass is gonna dive right for those toolies or that moss. You're gonna have to force him out of that. And if you have too light a leader, you're just gonna break him off. So it doesn't pay to use too light a leader. All you have to do is stick your thumb right in that bass's mouth and clamp down on the bottom of his mouth, hold him tight, and it sort of mesmetizes the bass. It just paralyzes him for a second, and you can get the bug out uh, easy, and then you can release him free again. To me, there's no sight as thrilling as taking a largemouth black bass on a fly rod in a bass bug. Oh, God, what a take that was. So much fun, these bass on the fly rod. Just can't tell you how much fun. Smaller fish like trout, bass, and panfish are the most popular fly rod fish because they're widely distributed and they're fun to catch. But larger fish take a fly too, and a larger fish on a fly rod is quite a challenge. For instance, let's look at steelhead. Steelhead are rainbow trout that grow up in the ocean. Then, like salmon, they return to spawn in the same stream where they were hatched years before. Steelhead do little feeding in fresh water but they will take a well-presented fly. An average steelhead weighs about eight pounds. A trophy steelhead weighs over 20. The most successful way to catch these seagoing rainbows is with wet flies. Until recently, taking a steelhead on surface flies was considered a rarity and practiced successfully by only a few fishermen. But given the right conditions and a fly designed to wake, we've learned that steelhead will readily come to the surface for a fly, as Lonnie Waller is about to demonstrate. Let's give it one more shot. Same cast. Out and down. Get the fly starting to swing by pulling back with my rod a little bit here. Now it's V'ing. Now I'm going to slack off a little bit to keep that tension at the right rate of speed. He's coming around. Boy, he took it! All right, run on the water waker. All right, let's see what he's going to do. What a grab. Right, come up just like a trout. And oh, there's a beautiful jump. Look at that guy come out, a cromer. Okay, come on, baby, come on. I better get a little bit better footing here. Oh, look at that guy tear up the top. Look at that. That's two beautiful jumps. Watch where you're walking. Check that drag. There he goes. All right. Keep your rod down low. Sweep him from side to side. Keep him off balance. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, look at that. Oh, you never know how well they're hooked. Oh, man. And you never know if he's chafing your leader. The current's kind of fast here. I'm gonna try and walk him there. We got him walking now. Come on, baby. Let's see what we got. We don't have it yet. I'm gonna try and swing it around above me. Oh, yes, sir. It's, that, that's 15, easy. Nope, not between my legs, you don't. All right, now there's a fish on a dry fly <laughs> right there. Look at that guy. Well, now we come to the fastest growing area of our sport, saltwater fly fishing. Here you'll find the ultimate challenge in the newest fly fishing arena, the oceans of the world. Saltwater fish are bigger, stronger, and faster than most freshwater fish, and they love to eat flies. For Chico Fernandez, stocking the shallow tidewater flats provides exciting fishing for a variety of fish, including the ghost of the flats, the bonefish. One of the reasons I like fly fishing in the flats is that it's such a beautiful combination of hunting and fishing. Also, because the fish are so spooky in this shallow water, you must also become a caster. A delicate 40, 50, 60 foot cast is required. Also, and probably most of all, there's one factor that I love about fly fishing the flat. 
you're still in salt water, you're still at the edge of the ocean, and you never know. You could see that 15 pound bonefish, you can see that giant tarpon, you're right at the edge of the ocean, you never know. By far my favorite flatfish is the bonefish. Combination of several factors contribute to this. One is the fact that he is so spooky. Two is the fact that he can come in even into six, seven, eight inches of water. And third is that they're so powerful, they're all muscle. The fish seven, eight, nine pounds can make a 200 yard run, two football fields. A bonefish is basically a bottom feeder. And in this shallow water, when he puts his mouth down, his tail shows above the water. One thing he eats is shrimp. So I'm going to cast a shrimp pattern right in front of him. When he looks up, I want him to see the fly. He's right behind the fly, right behind it, right behind it. He's got it. He's got to clear the line and let him go, let him go. He's taking me right to the backing. Okay, I can start to turn him around. Get him back, get him back. These fish are all muscle. No matter what size they are, pound per pound, strongest fish in the flat. Okay, I have him close to me now. Oops, there it takes a little bit more line. He's tired enough to land. Put your hand gently on him. He's only a couple of pounds, but any fish that'll take me right to the back end, still a lot of fun. I'll hold him gently and remove the hook. Now when I release him, I want to make sure he swims okay. I'll pump him back and forth to get some water through his gills, and then I'll let him go. That was a small bonefish, but a real strong one. An awful lot of fun. When you go offshore for monster fish like tarpon or sharks, you want a heavyweight system a strong 11 or 12 weight rod with a reel that can hold at least 200 yards of backing line and has a powerful drag. What makes a big fish tire is a drag of five or six pounds keeping relentless pressure on him. Even then, it takes a long time to land a big fish in salt water. Billy Pate specializes in landing big fish on fly tackle. Watch as he tries for a giant tarpon with a 16 pound test leader. Billy, Billy, nine o'clock behind you. Big fish coming in. Okay. Nine o'clock, about 100 feet, coming right at us. Got him. Cow, Mike. If I can just hit him. It's a fish we're looking for. Got him, Mike. It's a fish we're looking for. That's a huge fish. That's the monster, boys. God, this is the one, Billy. Oh, let's take him, Billy. Almighty. I'm shaking all over. Holy mackerel. Oh, my God. Coming across, coming across. This is an erratic fish, Billy. Yeah, he is. Goes right, goes left, goes right, goes left. You see how thick he is? You see that depth? That means he's got weight. You see that straighten out? Yeah. It's straightening right now, Billy. Get you out of the gate. I'm in here this time. Okay. I've got the new gaff. Got 
got him. Big devil. I had him over. Get that hook. What's that point? Real deep, real wide. All right, we'll revive him. I'll, I'll electric along a little bit. We'll try to revive him here. He's in pretty good shape right now, Billy. Yeah, that's a big fish, Bill. He's a good fish, boy. In another year, he'll be a monster. Okay. I think he's gonna survive all right. He's ready right now, Billy. If I can get this guy out. Okay. okay. You got him? Yeah. He's okay. There he goes. Nothing wrong with him. <laughs> that other gaff just kept straightening right out on me. It's almost straight out now. Look. You can land big fish with a fly rod, and salt water is the place to do it. But salt water is not the end of this adventure. You'll find that the fly fisherman's world stretches around the globe to all the fine places where game fish live, to all the streams and oceans of the world. You may wish to visit South America or New Zealand to try for giant trout. How'd you like to drift a dry fly over this 10 pound brown? If it's at all possible, try to take your fly rod to Alaska, where there's more to fishing than just catching fish. In July, the sockeye salmon begin their return to their native streams to spawn. Fresh run sockeye are great sport on a fly rod, as Ed Rice is about to find out. Sockeye feed only on plankton, but they will take a small wet fly. When hooked, a hot sockeye can pour on the speed and spin circles around you. But most of them like to jump. Sockeye are tough fish, and you'll know you've been in a fight before you get one to the beach. Imagine what it would be like to catch 20 in an afternoon. On the outer edge of the fly fisherman's world live the billfish. Les Eichhorn has taken almost every game fish that swims with a fly rod. On this trip, he traveled to Australia's Great Barrier Reef to try for a 200-pound marlin. He'll be using a 9-foot fly rod and a 13-weight line. The fly is 10 inches long, tight on a 7-knot hook. The reel holds over 600 yards of backing line. But the class tippet on the leader is only 16-pound test. Think of the challenge Les will face. He's traveled 8,000 miles and has only a few days to fish. But he'll fish in conditions most people wouldn't think of trying. For six days, the wind will blow at 25 knots and cover the coral sea with 15-foot swells. Well, casting the large fly is difficult under normal conditions. In this wind and heavy seas, it's nearly impossible. Then, when he does hook a big marlin, he'll not only have to fight the fish, but also the stringent conditions that Mother Nature has forced upon him. Will the tackle hold up to hours of this kind of punishment? Can the fisherman last? Can he make it through hours of straining against a powerful fish while braced against the side of a rocking boat? It's a stand-up fight, and no one else can touch the equipment. After three and a half hours of fighting a marlin that weighed over 300 pounds, the tackle and the fisherman stood the test. This fish took 500 yards of line straight down, and Les fought him back to the surface. But disappointment came when the hook pulled out, as the fish circled just 30 feet beneath the boat. Yes, a fly rod can be your ticket to some spectacular places, and some fabulous fishing. Now you understand why fly fishing is becoming so popular. There are virtually no limits to the variety of fish you can catch, and you can catch fish with a fly rod virtually everywhere you go. You'll find that fly fishing offers you fun and excitement on whatever level you wish to pursue. Well, if I've done a good job, this tape has stimulated a desire within you to learn fly fishing. It's going to be a lot easier for you than it was for me because the 3M company has produced a series of video tapes that will take you through each step of the way. Your first step is fly fishing made easy. This tape will get you started. By watching this program, you can get started in fly fishing the fastest, easiest way possible. 
Learn to choose the right equipment and put it together. Learn the basic casting skills you'll need to go fly fishing. And discover a formula for success that will help you catch any kind of fish with a fly rod. Thanks for being with me and good luck. And now, as Henry David Thoreau once said, a man is what he thinks. I think I'll go fishing. It's excitement you're after. Come fishing with the experts from 3M Scientific Anglers and learn ways to catch more and bigger trout on the fly. You'll learn where to find trout in a stream and ways to present the right fly with the perfect cast so you can catch the most elusive trout during hatch and non-hatch situations. Plus, there's steelheading for 20-pound rainbows or going for the ultimate saltwater challenge. Let 3M Scientific Anglers bring home the excitement while you learn a lifetime of mastery techniques that will help you become the best fly fisherman you can be. There's no other sport like fly fishing. It can truly give you a lifetime of discovery and enjoyment. Whether you fish your own favorite stream, or travel the world with your fly rod, there's no end to what you'll learn. To help speed you along your path of discovery, Scientific Anglers from 3M has recruited some of the world's best fly fishermen to produce a complete learning system of videotape programs. Unlike simple how-to videos, the Scientific Anglers Mastery Series shows you more than just tips. It gives you an easy-to-learn formula for success to truly help you become a master angler. There are programs designed to give you a strong foundation of knowledge and skill. At the next level, the mastery system helps you integrate the skills and knowledge into sophisticated fly fishing strategies. And for the expert, there are challenge level programs that offer original and innovative techniques to help you master the most difficult fly fishing situation. Think of it as a learning path towards fly fishing mastery. The tape you just viewed is part of that path. In Doug Swisher's Trout Series, Scientific Anglers presents a four-part program that features a natural learning progression. First, there's basic fly casting, where you learn loop control and the principles of throwing a perfect straight line cast. Then you move on to advanced fly casting, building your skills with more complex casting techniques, including curve and reach cast. Now you're ready for action as Strategies for Selective Trout shows you how to fish a hatch from bottom to top. And you'll almost feel the strike as Doug demonstrates ways to take difficult trout in non-hatch conditions. Finally, in Advanced Strategies for Selective Trout, Doug teaches you his most sophisticated methods including ways to successfully fish the midge, 
how to unlock the mysteries of masking hatches and special streamer tactics to catch big trout. You'll be part of the action as you look through the eyes of the expert and learn the real whys behind the mastery of fly fishing for trout. While you're improving your streamside skills, you may also want to learn to tie your own flies. Gary Borger shows you a step-by-step -step approach to the basics of fly tying. And Doug Swisher demonstrates how to tie flies to match the hatch and his deadly attractor patterns. If you're hooked on catching the big ones, you've got to see the four-part series on fly fishing for Pacific Steelhead. Lonnie Waller and Jim Teeny will provide you with a complete arsenal of skills so that you can take these giant rainbows, even in the most challenging conditions. But that's not all. Scientific Anglers takes you south to watch world record holder Billy Pate demonstrate his secrets of success for hooking up and landing the ultimate fly fishing game. And if you love fishing, hunting, and other sports, think of 3M as your total video resource for outdoor adventure. Explosive action, in-depth information, incredible scenes. 3M Sportsman's Video Collection brings you the world of bass fishing with America's top anglers like Doug Hannon, Ricky Klein, and Al Linder, a comprehensive learning series that'll make you the best bass angler on your lake. You'll be glad you watch these programs when you catch the bass of a lifetime. the gentle beauty of a deep forest glade, the heart-pounding excitement of a trophy buck in rut, going one-on-one -on -one with North America's most popular big game animal. That's what deer hunting's all about. And nobody brings you more in-depth information than true life action than the 3M Sportsman's Video Collection. The excitement of calling a bird into your gun. The satisfaction of making a clean shot. And the companionship of a well-trained dog. If you like the challenge of upland game bird and waterfowl hunting, 3M Sportsman's video collection gives you the thrill of being there. And the knowledge you need to master the sport. If you're serious about having fun on the slopes, then the video series Skiing with Style is just for you. 3M got together with Skiing Magazine and the Professional Ski Instructors of America to bring you a unique, proven training method that will help you learn more advanced techniques faster than you ever thought possible. You'll feel like you're skiing right along with the pros as you build your confidence and learn new skills that can make the entire mountain your playground. Be sure to see the Skiing with Style series from 3M you'll be looking good out on the slopes.